Hey guys, Mr. B here, and in this video, we're going to be going over the chapter 11.3 practice problems on acceleration. So let's start off with number one, the rate at which velocity changes is called, so this is directly from the notes, um, but this is of course called acceleration. Let's change our font color here to be red. There we go. Okay, so the rate at which velocity changes is what we call acceleration. Number two, describe three changes in velocity. So what are three ways that velocity can change? Um, now remember that velocity is speed plus direction. So our velocity can change either by changing our speed, changing our direction, or changing both. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to say changing speed, changing direction, or changing both. All right, number three, true or false, acceleration is the result of increases or decreases in speed. Um, now, because acceleration is a change in velocity and speed is a component of velocity, this is partly true because acceleration is the result of increases or decreases in speed, but it also is a result of changing direction. So it's not fully true. Um, so I'm going to say for this one false because we also can change direction, which then also changes our acceleration. So it's not only speed. Okay. So I'm going to say false. Um, number four, a horse on a carousel that is moving at a constant speed is considered to be accelerating because so a carousel, if you've ever been on one, which some of you may or may not have, um, are like those little animals that, that go, kind of go up and down and you, like, you sit on it and it goes around in a circle as they kind of go up and down. So a horse on a carousel, which is moving at a constant speed, so it's going the same rate as it goes around in a circle, is considered to be accelerating because it's changing its direction constantly, right? So it's going in a circle, it's constantly changing its direction and direction is a component of acceleration. So if you change your direction, you are accelerating. So we are going to say uh, a horse on a carousel that is moving at a constant speed is considered to be accelerating because it is constantly changing direction. Okay, there we go. All right, moving on to the next questions here. Number five, a skater increases her velocity from two meters per second to 10 meters per second in three seconds. What is the skater's acceleration? All right, now we have an equation for acceleration on the previous slides, but it is um, final velocity or final speed minus starting speed divided by time. So our final speed in this case is she's going from two to 10. So her final speed is 10 meters per second. Her starting speed is two meters per second. And the total time that it takes her to do this is three seconds. So basically we're gonna go 10 minus two Divide that by three, and that will tell us our acceleration. So 10 minus two is eight, divide that by three, we get 2.6, uh, we'll just round it to 2.7 meters per second. And now, I don't know if this was mentioned in the notes, I probably should have mentioned it, but if it wasn't, um, the units for acceleration are meters per second squared, okay, or meters per second per second. So, um, you know, it's very close to velocity or speed, right, is meters per second, but it has that little squared component on there. So don't forget that when you're writing your units for your answer. All right, number six, um, while traveling along a highway, a driver slows from 24 meters per second to 15 meters per second in 12 seconds. What is the automobile's acceleration? Okay, so this one is basically similar to the first one, but now we are slowing down. So he goes from 24 to 15. So his final speed is 15 meters per second. And his starting speed is 24 meters per second. And then the time, of course, is 12 seconds. So we're going to have 15 minus 24, divide that by 12. And we are going to end up with a negative number. Okay, but again, that just tells us that we are decelerating or slowing down, which in the problem, it does tell us that they are slowing down. So our number should be negative. So when we do all this, I get negative 0.75. And again, the units will be meters per second squared. Okay, so it's a negative number because they're slowing down. Makes perfect sense. Looks fine to me. All right, let's keep on moving here then. Um, taking a look at number seven. A speed time graph in which the displayed data forms a straight line is an example of a. 
Okay, so this is from the slides here, but a speed time graph where the, the data forms a straight line is an example of, we can either say a linear graph or we can say um, of a constant acceleration. Okay, I'm going to use constant acceleration because that's kind of what the notes tell us. Okay, so if we have a speed time graph, we have a straight line. That is an example of a constant acceleration. Number eight, the plotted data points representing acceleration in a distance time graph form A. Okay, so if we have a distance time graph and there's an object that is accelerating, the line is going to have a curve to it. Okay, it's going to be non-linear. So I think that's directly from this slide here on the previous one. Um, but this is going to form a non-linear line. So the pilot data points representing acceleration in a distance time graph form a non-linear graph, something like that. All right, um, number nine, how fast was the object moving at A? All right, so we have this graph, um, and hopefully this isn't too hard for you to see. It's a little bit small on my screen, so maybe I can zoom in a little bit. There we go, it's better. Um, how fast was the object moving at A? All right, so at point A, now remember, we have speed on the y-axis, okay? So this is speed. So at point A, it looks like it's going at 10 meters per second. We can see that just by looking at the y-axis and seeing what the speed is. So we don't really need to do any math or anything for that problem. So this is gonna be 10 meters per second. Um, number 10, at what portions of the graph did the object have constant speed? So at what portions was the object not accelerating or was its speed not changing? Um, so pretty much that's, that's going to be all the flat parts, okay? So between A and B, between A and B, its speed was not changing. Between C and D, its speed was not changing. And between E and F, okay? So we'll say, again, change our color here to red, change our text to be a little bit smaller. So we'll say between A and B, C, D, and, oh, and E to F, okay? Those are the three spots. All right, and then lastly, number 11, determine the object's acceleration from point D to point E, show your work. Okay, so to find acceleration, again, on a, on a graph like this, we just have to find the slope, which is change in the vertical divided by the change in the horizontal. So from D to E, um, from D at D, it has, it, the, the Y is zero, and at E, it looks like it goes up to five. So vertically, it goes from zero to five, okay? So we're gonna go, um, again, let's change our font size, change our font color. So vertically, it goes up by five meters per second. We'll put these in parentheses because we're going to have another division thing here. Uh, oh, let's change that to red and make sure that also is the right font size. Okay, so five meters per second, that's the vertical change, okay, from zero to five. And then sideways, D is at uh, 16 seconds and E is at, it looks like 21 seconds. So from 16 to 21, that's five seconds of time. So divide that by five seconds equals, so basically five divided by five, that's going to give us an acceleration of one meter per second squared. Okay, and it's squared because it's an acceleration. So that's all we're doing there. All right, let's take a look at the last question here, number 12. The measure of how fast the velocity is changing at a specific instant is known as, so again, this is directly from the notes, it's on the previous slide here, but this is known as instantaneous acceleration. So let's put this underlined, instantaneous acceleration. There we go. All right, so that's the last problem for these notes. Hopefully that helped you if you had any confusion. But again, as always, if you have any other questions, make sure you ask me, reach out to me. All right, guys, that's it for the chapter. And uh, moving on, you'll be going on to your review guide before you take your test. So see you in that video. Bye.